This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is also in the words of that old Christmas song, it's the most wonderful time of the year. That's because school began here at Holy Cross this past Wednesday, August 11th, which also happens to be my bride's and my 42nd wedding anniversary. So lots of fun stuff this past week. This coming Wednesday, uh, preschool begins. So very exciting time of year. It's at the core of our being and our mission here at Holy Cross to pass on the faith to the next generation. And our worship service this day will talk about how it is that a Christian day school contributes to what uh, all of us in our life seek as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is to acquire wisdom and knowledge. With that, we make our beginning calling upon our great God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our first reading today comes from Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Wisdom has built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She has prepared her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the city. Whoever is gullible, turn in here. She says to a person without sense, Come, eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Stop being gullible and live. Start traveling the road to understanding. Whoever corrects a mocker receives abuse. Whoever warns a wicked person gets hurt. Do not warn a mocker or he will hate you. Warn a wise person and he will love you. Give advice to a wise person and he will become even wiser. Teach a righteous person and he will learn more. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading for this weekend comes from John, the sixth chapter, starting with the 60th verse. When many of Jesus' disciples heard him, they said, What he says is hard to accept. Who wants to listen to him anymore? Jesus was aware that his disciples were criticizing his message. So Jesus asked them, Did what I say make you lose faith? What if you see the Son of Man go where he has gone before? Life is spiritual. Your physical existence doesn't contribute to that life. The words that I have spoken to you are spiritual. They are life. But some of you don't believe. Jesus knew from the beginning those who wouldn't believe and the one who would betray him. So he added, That is why I told you that people cannot come to me unless the Father provides the way. Jesus' speech made many of his disciples go back to the lives they had led before they followed Jesus. So Jesus asked the twelve apostles, Do you want to leave me too? Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to what person could we go? Your words give eternal life. Besides, we believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Pastor Allersmeyer, I would like to pray for you before you preach today. Dear Heavenly Father, it's been a long journey on this uh, COVID time that we've had. All these online messages that Pastor Allersmeyer has been giving, this will be the last one that he gives. We have other preachers that will be taking after him, but Lord... What a blessing it's been that you have given him the strength, given him the words, given him the courage to be up here in front and do what you ask him to do. Lord, we just thank you for him, for all that he has done for us during this time. And Lord, we just pray that you will bless his message today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Deacon Breininger, I praise God for you and uh, other laity who have stepped up and have assisted us in these online worship services. Why does our congregation provide a Christian day school? Why do parents choose to invest time and energy and dollars to send their children to our Christian day school? Why do our parishioners, many of whom have no direct connection with our Christian day school, choose to support it with their time, their talents, and their treasure? I believe the answer to these questions is found in words from one of the wisest and most powerful people who ever lived, Solomon. And in the book of Proverbs, where he writes these words, Acquire wisdom, acquire understanding, love wisdom, and it will protect you. Acquire an understanding with all that you have. Cherish wisdom. It will raise you up. It will bring you honor when you embrace it. It will give you a graceful garland for your head. It will hand you a beautiful crown. That's in Proverbs chapter 4. And then he writes in our text for today, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now, for us to understand these 18 powerful words, we must realize several things. First of all, just to give you a little background, wisdom in the book of Proverbs is practical and proper. In that sense, it's what anyone would do in order to function well in this world. It's practical and proper, and at the same time, wisdom in Proverbs is living out our God-given faith to think, feel, and act like Jesus, in whom, as Paul writes in Colossians 2, verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Second thing for us to help understand those 18 words is that wisdom in the book of Proverbs is written in poetry, Hebrew poetry. Now, English poetry will rhyme sounds. For example, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are, star and are. And one of Deacon Brininger's favorite poems, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Snow and go, the rhyming of sounds. Now, Hebrew poetry rhymes ideas. In fact, it is called parallelism. And in our text, we have a particular kind of parallelism where something is said one way, And then it is said another way, the same concept. And that serves to reinforce it, to emphasize it. Listen again to our text. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So God wants to emphasize through the pen of Solomon, wants to emphasize for us how important wisdom and understanding are in our lives. Let's dig into the text a little bit. The fear of the Lord, and again, parallelism, the Hebrew rhyming of ideas, the fear of the Lord, and the knowledge of the Holy One. God is emphasizing something for us. What is he doing by repeating this thought? It's kind of strange to think about fearing God. When I think about fearing, I think of someone kind of jumping out from behind a a, a door or out of a closet and kind of giving me a fright. Well, fearing does have that sense. Fear has that sense in the Bible. But fear has a different sense as well. Let me read for you some verses from the Psalms that will give you this other sense, the sense in which it is used in our text. In Psalm 34... The psalmist writes, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. And then it goes on, it says a couple verses later, O fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. And then in Psalm 130, we read these words, But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. So fear is certainly used in the Bible in terms of fearing something calamitous, but fear is also used as a sense of awe and reverence, a sense of amazement and living the pious Christian life. And teaching our children and their families. It's very important that we learn to fear God. In other words, to live in wonder as we think and feel and act like Jesus. Sometimes I think we've lost that sense of fear, that reverential awe, that wonder of the great God who has given us the very life that we possess and the eternal life that we anticipate through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have the fear of the Lord, and then we have in our text the knowledge of the Holy One. 
this is an interesting word as well because knowledge is more than learning something up here in your head, more than standing back and observing something. Knowledge is experiential learning. It is active engagement. It is learning by doing. And that's one thing I think is tremendous in a Christian day school, and even more so for us as Christians as we follow our Savior Jesus Christ on this side of eternity. I had a dear, dear mentor back when I first felt the tug by the Lord to become a pastor. And dear Pastor Krause, his ordination verse was taken from Micah chapter 6, and it talks about knowledge as that which we learn by doing, that we put into practice. And in Micah chapter 6 verse 8, the prophet writes these words, He has shown, he being God, has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's why in the mission statement of this blessed congregation, it talks about we equip and send people so that they might make a Christ-like difference in the world. This is why we do things like reach out within our neighborhood community. We partner with Lewis King to feed, to pray, and to walk with people who have not always been the beneficiaries of a fair shake within our culture and our society. We are learning by doing. We are engaged in the process of making a Christ-like difference in the world. So, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we have wisdom and understanding, these two ideas being rhymed with one another. What is God trying to tell us in this? Well, as we said earlier, wisdom in the book of Proverbs means that we live out our lives in a practical and proper way by living out our God-given faith to think, to feel, and to act like Jesus Christ as disciples. Jesus in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom really is that which prepares us for success. And I have to tell you, as the father of uh, at least one child who is um, uh, profoundly developmentally disabled, at least in terms of autism, my wife and I have had to think hard and deep about what it is that constitutes success. You know, you get the same kind of Christmas letters that I get, where families write about everything that's happened and Junior discovered the cure for cancer, you know, and the little gal was state champion and this or that. And, you know, you sit there and you think, oh, golly, what is success about? And those are wonderful things. I don't want to put those kind of things down. I rejoice and celebrate with those families. But success is that which is measured both in this world and the world to come. I've always thought it is just to develop whatever it is that God has given to you and to have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our um, outcomes, our ends as they are called for our congregation, we say this about our school. The end or outcome is this, that students of our school are equipped to succeed at subsequent stages in their lives and vocations as disciples of Jesus Christ. That's wisdom. And then the parallel term of understanding. That's a fascinating word in the original language Hebrew. The word comes from the Hebrew word for between, that which is something between and on either side of it. And it implies the ability to distinguish the real from what is unreal, the true from what is false. 
That is understanding. I guess in our world today, we are all hung up about what does this celebrity or that celebrity, what is that musician, what is that uh, actor, actress, what is that sports figure have to say about something, or what does that politician think on this particular issue, or what are our peers saying to us versus what real understanding is? What does God say? Where does God stand on particular issues that seem to trouble and to divide our culture? So when I think about the value of Christian education, both in a pre-K through 8 elementary school and for all of us in this congregation, it is to live our lives awestruck and engaged in what God is doing in our lives and through our lives, and to live our lives successfully, which means to be in alignment with God's will and his word for this age and the age to come. That's a lot of great stuff, Pastor A. So how do we bring it all together? Two simple words. They're words that resound again and again on the pages of the New Testament. And since Christians from early time have looked at the wisdom of Proverbs and have seen there the pre-incarnate Christ, in other words, Jesus, before he took on human flesh, when I read about wisdom, I'm thinking Christ, Jesus Christ. And so we bring this all together with the two simple words, in Christ. In Christ, we have redemption, and we have reconciliation to one another and, and to this world that's been broken apart because of sin. In Christ, we have forgiveness from sin and freedom from the fragmentation that sin has uh, wreaked upon this world in terms of, of breaking us apart. In Christ... We have all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. As Deacon Breininger read for you from John chapter 6, the Apostle Peter, when people were beginning to run away from Jesus because of what he had to say, Peter said, your word, your word gives us eternal life in Christ. That is why our congregation provides a Christian day school. That is why parents invest and choose to send their children to this and many other Christian schools, pre-K through graduate school, Holy Cross, our other wonderful Lutheran elementary schools in Fort Wayne and beyond, our Concordia Lutheran High School, and our Christian colleges, our Concordias, and a number of other wonderful Christian colleges around the country and the world. That is why our parishioners, many of whom have no direct connection with our Christian day school, continue to support it with their time and their talents and their treasures. Because if there is one thing that is essential, one thing that is needful, it's to acquire wisdom, to acquire knowledge, and to recognize that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, Heavenly Father, so many times we spurn your wisdom. We turn away from your understanding. And as it says in the book of Isaiah, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us turned to his or her own way. Lord, forgive us for this. Renew us, lead us, so that we might delight in your will, in your wisdom, and to walk in your holy way. For we ask this in the name of him who embodies wisdom and understanding, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
your Son, our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And upon this your confession, I have the privilege of one who has been called by the Lord Jesus Christ, called and ordained by his body, the church. I'm simply an ambassador acting on your behalf. And in the name and by the stead of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, a called and ordained servant of the word, forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to continue to thank you for your graciousness that you continue to give to us in your tithes and offerings, that you continue to support Holy Cross Church and School so that our mission can continue to go forward. And we want to go to the Lord and thank Him and take this all to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God of all grace, we can never outgive you. As we give you our financial gifts, help us to use the spiritual gifts you have given us. We thank you for giving to each of us the manifestation of your spirit for our common good. To each of us, you have given different spiritual gifts to serve you and your church, to build up each other spiritually. May we serve you financially with our giving and spiritually through ministering with our gifts from you. In our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Now, let us pray for the whole church of God in Jesus Christ, and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have sent the great Good Shepherd who has compassion on his flock. In his name, we lift up our prayers for the family of God, for every nation, tribe, people, and language, and for all those who hunger for the true bread of life. Grant us always, O God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of this congregation in our community, that many may embrace Jesus as the Savior and believe that he is the true bread of God who has come from heaven. Grant that we would never hunger or thirst for anything but Christ and his righteousness. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Christian day schools that you have provided for us, for Holy Cross Lutheran School and all other elementary schools, for Concordia Lutheran High School and other high schools, and for our colleges and universities, Lord. What a great blessing that you have given to us. And Lord, we just pray that we will continue to use them and support them, Lord, so that your word may be spread out throughout the communities. By your Holy Spirit, change our old nature into your new creation in Christ. Enable us to cling to your word and sacraments that we may put aside the cravings of our sinful flesh and be clothed with your likeness in true righteousness and holiness. Bestow your power of healing upon the sick that in accordance with your will they may give thanks to your name. Give your spirit of hope to the depressed, the lonely, and those who mourn the death of loved ones, 
strengthen their faith, and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Within the fold of your tender care, O Father, we entrust these petitions to you, that you might hear us, teach us your word, and feed us with the bread of life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Allersmeyer, final thought, please. Remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So through a Christian day school, through in the everyday living of your lives, and whatever educational setting and knowledge base God places you in, acquire wisdom, acquire knowledge, and remember that in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and of understanding, of knowledge. Receive now the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.